Welcome to Young Gun, a podcast about Bryce Young and the Carolina Panthers. I'm Demetri Ravonis, a Bama grad. She is Lauren Brownlow, the biggest Panthers fan I know. And for only the second time this season, we are happy hosting a podcast uh, about the team with a spotlight on its franchise quarterback, Lauren Brownlow. I went into Sunday thinking the rain means there's a chance. And lo and I behold, felt the opposite, but that's really, I, I thought the rain means well, there's we a just chance. saw them in the downpour in Tampa. So for sure, for sure. And I don't know if it's because like, I think outside of quarterback, there is still a lot of talent in Tampa where I don't no, quite sure. feel that about Atlanta. Um, I think there's a lot of talent. I don't think it's being used very well at all. No, I was going to say there is talent. Yeah. Like I was like, you know, if they're going to beat anyone, it's going to have to be someone like the Falcons who, right. you know, th- and that's the thing. I'm not, not to digress too much however i have mentioned at least other places don't know if it's been on here that i'd never make fun of the 28 to 3 yeah because it seems like something that could have so easily happened to my team so i'm never gonna mock them for that or for being like ridiculous because we're also ridiculous we are also an unserious organization so how am i gonna laugh at the falcons for the same thing but i mean you knew that like if any team was going to allow that to happen and help along the way. Right. Thank you for your help. <laughs> you know what? It's Christmas. We got Falcons charity. I, I was about to say, this <laughs> might as well be a Desmond Ritter appreciation podcast. Lots of gifts. Oh, man. Were they ever. Uh, before we jump in, let's talk to you about the folks at Graffiti, 158 East Cedar Street in downtown Cary, home of uh, the Bourbon Pour specials on Sundays, 19 TVs, axe throwing, weekly prizes, weekly beer specials. If you have not experienced a football Sunday uh, at Graffiti, your chances are running out out this season so make time to do it this coming weekend blanton's at ten dollars a pour eagle rare angels envy nine dollars a pour mckenna 10 year heaven hill seven year and buffalo trace all at eight dollars a pour plus there's always the cool art on the walls don't just rely on the specials the drink menu is changing all the time at graffiti 158 east cedar street in downtown Cary. go check it out before the football season is over but after that, go check it out any old yeah, time. Yeah, they have cool DJ nights and Absolutely. stuff like that. It's it's really fun. Uh, have you seen all the pictures and videos they are posting from various friend group Christmas parties they are hosting? Uh, no, I've seen some, but I, not yet. I have not seen one where anybody looks anything other than having the time of their life. Right. Yeah. It makes sense. It's a fun place to be. Yeah. Graffiti 158 East Cedar Street in downtown Cary. Lauren, was Bryce too short this week? Apparently not. No, he wasn't. Let's we'll we'll talk about the kneeling at the end in a second because that did give me some hives sitting in a Charlotte train station as I watched it. But it might have just been something else. Very well could be. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But even when things were not, even when drives were not coming to a successful end, he seemed more up than he has in the past. And I don't know if he was thinking the same. The rain gives us a chance. We've seen this team before. I don't know what it is that lent itself to the confidence, but he seemed to have more even in that first half that was, I want to say, I was going to say for sure in the second half, the first that looked like he was still overthrowing a lot. I don't don't know if it's miscommunication sometimes because sometimes the overthrows are so, it's so far that you're like, wait, was someone supposed to be there? Did someone slip? It's raining. Like, I don't know. But you know, in the second half, I thought he just kind of came out there with like, look, we're right. We're right in this. We can do this. And yep. they had I, th- I thought for the most part, with the exception of at least like one or two drives, they were much better because the first quarter was just a, a parade of sads. Oh, my God. It was <laughs> it was painful to watch. It was a combination of and I looked at this at the end of the first quarter. I looked at the drive chart and it was a combination of punts and turnovers on downs. Yeah. On both sides. I mean, they did. I did like that they went for a fourth and seven. I, to me, it looked like he got it. Yeah. Now, granted, like there's a bunch of things going on, and always the angle's not always what you think it is. And maybe there was a part of a calf down that I couldn't see because of like the rain stained right. the camera or whatever. But I was <laughs> sitting there like, he got that. And I'm still annoyed by it, but it's fine. It ended up working out just fine. I, uh, I, I like that they did it though. Yes. Uh, seven to six at the end of the game, the Panthers are on the goal line, literally on the the one yard okay. line. There's a now they get down there. 
I believe before the two minute warning. Well, no, that, or was it right after? It was right after. Like it was the first play to go. after the two I, two minute warning. Yeah. Yes, it was like one forty one to go. They're staring at a choice, mm-hmm. right? Of like, okay, what do we do here? Yeah, the Falcons are out of timeouts at that point. That's right. The Falcons take their final timeout right out of the two minute yeah. warning. Yeah. So that was it was around that time that yeah they had a decision to make and i honestly like a lot of times i claim to know yeah what's what's the best decision even if obviously i don't really know right um i honestly didn't know like i was like i could see an argument mm-hmm. for both sides like do you try to score a touchdown i don't know have they not been trying to score those <laughs> It seems hard. <laughs> right, right. And like, do you try and fail? Like, do you risk a turnover? Like, do you, you know, risk giving it back too quickly? Like, really, the Falcons do should just let Chuba score. Absolutely. But, you know, they're like us. Yeah. So they'll always find a way to screw it up. <laughs> so, you know, thank you, I guess. Uh, yeah. And so I thought that one kneel down made sense because you can burn off uh, you can burn off a ton of time in the NFL yeah, on like just 30, a single kneel, kneel 30 down. Some 35 right? 35 seconds yeah uh so that would have taken you down to 110 and then i thought you start running plays only because and granted this is where the i've made a terrible decision to be a panthers fan as much as i trust eddie pinero i did not the feel like the conditions were not great. Not only were the conditions not great, because that's what made it more complicated for me. If yeah. it's normal conditions, I say absolutely they did the right thing. Yeah, but S- it wasn't. So. See, to me, it was it, not only that because I did think about okay, gosh, you got to think about footing. You got to think about right. you know grip on the that's ball. What all was that making kind of me stuff. Me nervous once it got because at first I'm like, yes, this is the right call. Yeah, and then it gets down and I'm like, oh god. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was making me nervous, and also there was a part of me that was a little bit like. Like, just go for it. Yeah. That's like fair. I just yeah. I just want to see them put this away because but, but then they have to put it into the end zone. Uh, <laughs> and that seems very hard I guess for them to do. What I was thinking the whole time was I don't understand why you won't just try and put it in the end zone because A, you'll have the opportunity to kick the field goal. But right. B, what about Desmond Ritter makes you think that there is any amount of time you could leave on the clock that is too much for the okay, guy? Okay, that's a good counterpoint. I yeah. hear that. Like I said, like to me, I was just literally like, I don't know what the right thing to do here. Was. Right. Like, I don't know if I should be mad or if I should, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And, I, and it was a tough call. It really was. I think like the way NFL coaches think about it probably is like, what is the way that we can ensure that there are the fewest possibilities for something to go horribly wrong it, listen, for us? It is, it is 100% the reason that I prefer yeah. the college game to the pro game is yeah, 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 yeah. there is such... things go wrong way more. It, well, not well, only do things go wrong way more, <laughs> is there's so here. much more coaching to yes. don't let things go wrong as opposed to, yeah. God, this will be really cool if we pull it off. Right. Like coaches that coach the way NFL coaches do are usually not long for college football. Right. Unless you're Kirk Ferentz. <laughs> yes. Unless you are in a specific group of four states Narduzzi. on the Great Plains. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Or Pat Narduzzi. Although he just hired a real offensive coordinator, so everyone can change. Oh, yeah. But I'm sure that guy will give up and quit. Uh Calling plays halfway through. Yeah, the but season. like that's that's the thing. I agree with you. Like, there's way more like risk averseness in yeah. the NFL, and certainly the Panthers have no business being risk averse at this point. Exactly. But at the same time, it does feel like it felt like okay, they know they're right there in position for a win. Bryce has led this great drive because, like, even though I knew what was going to happen, like watching it back through when I actually had time to sit with it because yeah. I did couldn't watch it live, I was like. This is going to end horribly, even though I knew it didn't. <laughs> yeah. But they got the ball with like seven and a half minutes in the fourth and kept it the entire time. Right. Like I was, you know, I was like, this is not going to end well. Yeah. The, but it s- did. Since switching over to just purely saying, you know, salaries be damned, Chuba is our lead back. I love him so much. The running game has been oh. more consistent. It makes me kind of wonder you know, was there was there a mental thing? Was there an emotional thing going on with Chuba where clearly I'm running the ball better and feeling defeated by not getting more carries than Sanders? We'll, we'll get into all that in just a second. Uh, first, though, I do want to tell you that each and every Tuesday night we are on Origin Sports TV. Uh, you have it. You just may not know it. It is on all of those uh, fast TV services built into your TV, built into your Roku, your Zumo, Amazon Freebie, and Samsung TV+. Plus. Find Origin Sports TV on on your fast TV device and find us there each and every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Um, after a second win, yeah, does it change any feeling or any want at all you have for this team? 
I mean, I don't know what the current draft situation is. Sure. Um, as of as of today, they like the Bears have the pick. The Bear, well, yeah, the, the Bears have pick. the pick, but they do. Yeah, it's number one. You would need to win one more and have either Arizona or New England lose out because that would be funny. Yeah, if they could avoid. Yeah, the Bears getting the number one pick, but that's really. I mean, I yeah, I mean, I, would it be nice to see? Like, that's the thing. We, uh, that's the thing I've expressed the most frustration about mm-hmm. is win or lose. It has felt like whenever. Bryce and the offense have put together like some solid moments, performances, drives, even within games. It's like they can't carry it over. Like nothing can build upon itself. It's just like, oh, that was a nice moment and it's gone. (laughs) Yes, exactly. I look at I look at the schedule coming up and it goes Green Bay at Jacksonville and then Tampa Bay at home. There's only one good team in that group. There's only one undeniably good team. I mean, how in that many group. good teams have the Panthers played this year? No, agreed. Agreed. Not <laughs> the, many. No. So that's the thing. Like, yes, you're right. But also, I mean, the bar is low. The bar is low. But to your point about they can't seem to carry anything over from drive to drive, from game to game, I would like to see some evolution there. And even if you do not beat Green Bay, this coming up week. If you can get Green Bay in a situation where they are not comfortable going into the final drive of the game, I would be very happy with that. I would like to see one more win. I would like to see this team get to three and 14. It's not going to break me if uh, this ends at two and 15, but I just want to see some belief. I will be honest with you going into this game. Would love to ruin something for the Bucks. That'd be fun. Would love to ruin something for a division team. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, hell, would love to ruin something for two division teams. I think there is like major... Uh, panic in Atlanta today. Well, yeah, yeah, because yes, that's there's a reason that, and this the only thing that dampened my mood even slightly was that I saw that the the Saints fans got to see the end on the jumbotron and cheered, and I was like, <laughs> this wasn't for you. We didn't do this for you, right? You don't get to be happy. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, I mean, look, I mean, it, yeah, if we could put together something where it is ruin. Division race I, for the I'm Falcons. Here for the ruining. Ruin the division race for the Buccaneers. Ruin playoff races for Houston and Green Bay. Like, if that's as good as it gets, so be it. Oh, so the, be it. The Jags? Are the Jags in the playoff race? The Jags are pretty solidly in, I think. Okay. Well, so the, that's probably an L. Yeah. Right? So and, then and you also, look at like, Packers and Bucks. I'm like, can you win one of those? Yeah. Even yeah. though even though on Sunday night, we saw the Jaguars make enough mistakes that make you think, oh, okay. Well, listen, they're cousins. They're, sure. they're, those teams are cousins. <laughs> You know, they're, they're felines. That's right. Both. And they're both expansion teams, I think, around the same time. The same if not year. the same. Yeah, yeah. Same year. I both thought so. Teal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. The the uniform was interesting. As both, well for the Panthers uh, this week. both former homes of which quarterback played for both teams? Uh, Not Brunel. No, Brunel never played for the Panthers. Yeah, I didn't think so. Wasn't Winky, was it? <laughs> Call in. No, I don't know. Rodney Pete, I don't know. This feels like a waste of our time. <laughs> yes, it does. Either way, okay. uh, no, I, I do think that of the three remaining games, there are two games that there's no reason they cannot win. Now, does it mean they will win? Probably yeah. not, if we've right. learned anything about this team. You, you know what I want to see? Offensive touchdowns. I would really like to see an offensive touchdown. Wouldn't that be nice? It's been quite some time, Lauren. Do you know how many possessions started with like a great chance for a touchdown? Yeah. At least one. Yeah. They got a fumble at like the 25. And like, they also, I I think I I wrote it down at one point because I was like, are you serious? They had like a first and goal, goal, like the the two or something and managed to not score. And I'm like, I'm sick. I'm sick right now. I can't with y'all. I can't. Like, please, (laughs) just score a touchdown. Be a normal team for once. Please, score a touchdown. Like, I know it's hard. I know it's harder inside the red zone, all that. And I guess Atlanta has the number two red zone defense in the NFL. Whatever, fine. I don't care. Just score a touchdown. Like, just be normal. Score a touchdown on offense. It's really, like, teams do it every week. And somehow for y'all, it's like, oh, it's just too hard. No, it's not that hard. Yeah, th- there are things. And we'll we'll dive into this a little bit more uh, in the next segment. But Eddie Pinheiro is tired. Yes, Eddie, <laughs> that's OK. That's a great way to dive into this. That's a great pinpoint. Let's put a pin <laughs> in that. Let me tell everybody to please take the time to like and subscribe to the show wherever it is you get it. YouTube, uh, 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 various podcasting platforms. Go subscribe. That is very important to us. Rate and take time to leave a comment. That helps more people find Young Gun. Um, And the more people that find it, the more episodes we get to do. So please take the time to help us spread the word about this show. All right. Eddie Pinheiro is tired. And 
even though though when he comes out, it does tend to result in points, it is a sign that things did not go according to plan. Let me tell right? you, if I have to pick one image from this season that I will pick to remember it the most by, it is, even though it was in a win, I don't care. Yeah. It was in the first half at one point. It was one of those drives where they should have scored a touchdown. I think Bryce got sacked on third down. I yep. mean, again, Groundhog oh, there Day, you, go. you know, bing. But uh, <laughs> it was, there's Sir Purr in his rain hat and rain, you know, jacket, yellow yep. rain hat, yellow rain jacket, standing in the end zone, just going like this. The, and I'm like, well, that's just so sad. Hands up for the field goal. Yeah. Triumphant. <laughs> or trying. He was trying. Yeah. And I was just like, this is, and like in the background, you can see how sparsely attended it is. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. Oh, you sweet, sweet it. boy. You know, what's funny is I thought about this sort of watching the end of the game on TV because on Saturday night, my son and I did watch some, uh, some bowl games and we watched App State in the game down in Orlando. And I think that charlotte should take some pride in we showed up better than orlando did in the middle of the exact same storm and they're more used to rain and they they thrive in the rain they're more used to that kind of rain there yeah. are people that went down there for vacation from western north carolina and still chose not to attend that game because of the rain yeah yeah no, I, <laughs> there you go all right so here is sort of what i wanted to get at with eddie pinheiro coming out is sort of a sign of things did not go according to plan there's been a lot of chatter online about the pass on the last drive from Bryce to DJ Chart. Huh. And I don't think enough can be stated or enough can be made of the fact that that pass probably does not happen if Bryce does not have a beautifully clean pocket. Yes. And I know that's not something that the he, Panthers can he must count have been on. Like, what, what happened? Yeah, exactly. Is someone he, holding? He was probably very worried. <laughs> that was getting called back the entire time. I, there are There were glimpses in this game of what could be if everybody does their job the way they are supposed to. Right. Also, I liked that he scrambled more. Yes. And effectively. Like, he did a really good job of that. The one thing I will say I agreed 100% with Mark Schlereth on during the game mm -hmm. was when he said he needs to do that more. And yeah. I agree with that because there are times where I think he's waiting for someone to come open, waiting to, you know, and, and he, just take off. Just take yep. off, get what you can get and and call it a day. And that way, at least you get some positive yardage, you know, like, but if you wait too long, your window's going to close for that. I loved that. And his receivers helped him out in that final drive. That was so refreshing. Yeah, I, I think it was Daniel Jeremiah that pointed out on Twitter a few weeks ago that it is still pretty clear that Bryce is not understanding the difference between NFL open totally. and open open, right? Yeah, and, and, I would agree with that. Yeah, but I, I think it's getting better. Yeah. But I also think that it's easier for things to get better when you have more time in the yes. pocket to make those decisions. 100%. So, you know, I would like to see a few more of those moments for the season. I know given what we've seen up till now, it would be greedy to say, hey, that's what it should look like every time. It should, it won't. So just give him a few more of those moments in every game. Right, and I, I, that was my, that was legit my favorite thing though on that last drive was I feel like that was the drive, maybe the drive the most so all season that I felt like his receivers helped him out. Like mm -hmm. Mingo even had because Bryce was kind of scrambling around waiting for someone to come open, but he kind of ran away to yeah. to buy time, and then Mingo got himself went back to the ball even to help him out on that drive and make a pretty good catch for like I think it was like twenty yards or something like that. Yeah. That was a moment that stood out to me. I mean, especially because Mingo's had the dropsies like mad and right. you know, you you see and even Adam Thielen dropped it at one point in the first yeah. half. I was like, dude. Uh but at the same time, like it was just and then obviously Chark's catch was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Like that was an unreal catch. It was the best catch of the year for this team. I mean, yep. not that there's a lot to choose from. No, for sure. However, like it was really impressive for him to get his feet down and everything else. Obviously a good throw, but like a better catch, I would I would argue. And, and I think it's important too that this team won on the streak of games when Thielen has in some cases Obviously disappeared. Been more, I think he's been more of an emphasis defensively yep. because for a while he was obviously Bryce's favorite I mean, target in this game. He dropped balls. He also had yeah, that, that off sides call. Like, I mean, there, there were just some brain fart moments. Yeah. He had a him. false start. Yep. Yeah. The, I was going to say, if there was another offside, what's up with all these offensive offsides, sit down. Y'all have a quota for these calls or something? Know, What's it, going on? <laughs> At first I thought it was just the Panthers because of course the Panthers yeah. would get called for offensive offsides. Right. Yeah. But I'm like, dude, yeah. I see that it's like become an epidemic. <laughs> the midweek talk through uh, comes out each and every Thursday. This week included, even though as we uh, chug towards the holidays, it's me and a uh, football expert of some sort talking about Bryce and the Panthers as they get ready uh, for another game headed into Green Bay this weekend. Go ahead. I have a shout out 
just before I Please. forget to Adam Amin, who is a friend. I love Adam. Great guy in real life, but yeah. also very funny. Yeah. He made me laugh multiple times, including shouting out Robbie Anderson with the what's that bear doing <laughs> reference to the Panthers mascot. <laughs> when uh, Robbie famously thought Sir Purr was a bear. Right. Uh, someone was wearing a panther, like looked like a almost like a taxidermy type yeah. thing on his head. And he's like, what's that bear doing? <laughs> I laugh very hard. And he also called Tommy DeVito, Tommy Cutlets. So thank you, Adam, for bringing me moments of levity. Have you, you ever buddy. heard the uh, <laughs> clip of him on uh, maybe NBC Sports Chicago? I can't remember what the name of the, the network maybe. is up in Chicago yeah, where he bulls, calls the Bulls yeah. games. Yeah, uh, where he has to be held back from wanting to go fight uh, Grayson, uh, Grayson Allen. Oh God. <laughs> Cause he's so like, he's one of the nicest people right. I've ever met. Right. So that's kind of, <laughs> I need to hear that now. I'm going to have to look it up. All right. Uh, I want to end and I guess until the end of the season, it makes sense to end talking a little bit about the coaching search. Uh, what we knew was going to happen finally did the chargers now have an open job. Why did something happen? Yeah. Did something happen? Uh, holy crap. Did something happen? And here we are. This is the job, Lauren. We've been hearing like it's going to make it harder for the Panthers and the Raiders, although the, you know the Raiders are going to do something wacky with their coaching search. <laughs> That's it, what they do. It's going to make it harder for them to get their guy because this is the most desirable, most likely opening in the league. I am. I, part of me wonders if that's like the worst thing for them to not get their guy. Mm, fair. I mean... Like, I, I guess Reich was not the first choice necessarily yeah. last time around, but I, I probably was like second or third for him, seemingly. Yeah. So they, you know, had to go one down the list as opposed to several. And then obviously Matt Rule was the one he wanted because everyone else wanted him. <laughs> not, Lord, I, I, keep, salt energy. I keep needing to point this out. Not everyone else, just the Giants. Oh, that's right. Just well, the Giants. Well, you did hear that. Like, everybody was behind it, though. Like, everyone yeah. was like, oh, yeah, he's going to be great. Yeah. And I'm sitting here like, what? Yeah, I never understood it. Like, I, I, that's another example of the NFL media just gaslighting everyone. And <laughs> I'm like, why are we so sure about this? He rebuilt Baylor, sure, and Temple, but like, why are we sure this would work? I, I feel like it's really important to point out he rebuilt both of those teams from six and six finishes the year before he got there. Well, fair. I, I mean, mean, Baylor was in a little worse situation. Baylor was in a terrible reason, situation. But, yeah, but but uh, and Temple is not an easy place to win. No, agree, agree. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not uh, trying to say he did nothing. But this and look, idea he's that, obviously more at home at Nebraska. Yeah, for like, sure. He's. I'm not saying he's like been great, but he's more at home. There. Somebody pointed this out that Matt Rule. One thing Matt Rule does really well as a coach is assemble a staff yeah. that makes I up for that. his shortcomings. And he attempted to do that in Carolina, but I see, thought. But this is the thing. What he is best at, and this is how it was pointed out to me, the shortcoming he's best at filling is who is the guy that the local high school coaches are going to respond to being on right. the staff. Yes. Me coming from Philadelphia into Texas. Who does it matter that I have on this staff? What is the equivalent of that in the NFL? And look, his like huckster. Yeah, I don't know what the equivalent would yeah, be. Yeah, I like, don't think there is one. I, I guess like keeping a guy on staff, maybe that like is beloved, like former player on staff that yeah. like everybody loves, something like that, maybe. But I don't even know that that would be. Like, yeah, I, I just I don't think there, there is. is. I really think it's one. one of those like special to college football things that if you can do well, if you're good at identifying that, awesome. Now, what do you do with that in the real world? And his like car, car salesman energy works be way better in yes. college. Yes. Because the NFL guys look at you like, dude, be for real. Like they even mentioned this on the broadcast about Chris Tabor. Mm -hmm. They were talking about how refreshingly honest he was yeah. with, with them and how he like and how <laughs> he was with his players. Like it's a much better way to say it than the way we've been saying it. If he clearly does not give a about the this honesty, job. honestly. But I like it. I respect yeah. the the because uh, they're not honest most of the time. Yeah. NFL coaches aren't. And he's just like. Yeah, like he told the players, like, it's going to be rough. No one's going to be there. Yep. It's going to be miserable. Like, like, we're not playing very, like, we're not good right now. Yeah. Like, and I like that because they're not. Like, there's no need to pretend. Like, like remember, even in the beginning of the year, Frank Wright kept being like, oh, yeah, well, we've got so much to come on That's offense. Right. I'm like, please, no. At this point, I don't want to <laughs> see the horrors that await me after this. That's right. We were still playing like this was a playoff team in week nine or 10. Um, all right. Uh, before we wrap up, we've got to assume that. Arthur Smith is probably next. I, I would imagine they lost to the Falcons or to the Panthers. Who, who looked more miserable <laughs> the on only, a sideline? No, not on a sideline. The only thing I could equate it to, and it's funny, I said this to my father. The only thing I could equate this to when they showed that shot of the two of them side by side is, did you see the Orange Bowl press conference with Kirby Smart and uh, Mike Norvell competing to show who wanted to be there less?
Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, that's the exactly. only thing to compare it to. Uh, but like he had Arthur Smith has the sideline energy of like a dad who lost his kids at the mall. Yeah. He's like looking around. Like, <laughs> And then he looks discouraged. I would like, say <laughs> he looks like the trust fund baby of the guy that founded FedEx that is slowly realizing he may not be cut out to be an NFL head coach. Right. It's like that slow realization. Like, I've made a huge mistake yes. energy all the time. <laughs> like, hmm. Like, it's like, it's almost like he's contemplating, like, should I even be here? That's right. It, this, he is in the, uh, should I release the, it's not easy being white, it's not easy being brown phase of uh, Joe Bluthism. <laughs> right. Like, it's just, I was, I felt, I almost felt sorry for him a little bit, but it was also very funny because he has a mustache. Lucy, yeah. <laughs> why that's so funny to me but it's just like this dude with a mustache like trying to be a serious person that we should take seriously because in 2023 the fact that you have a mustache with no other facial hair means we're not going to take you like seriously. with no smile like right. just always like frowning i'm just like what's the point of you having a mustache if you're not going to be happy <laughs> why well, have a mustache it's kind of a comical thing a lot of right. times right be be funnier be happier <laughs> smile more